Don't try this at home, boys and girls. I've got a little bit of old primer fluid that I've got in the back of the ute from doing the irrigation excitement. That's a real blast from the past. I think our first or second episode had a bloke pouring metho on some pine needles. Here I am. I'm, I don't know, six years in and now I've found some, what have I got? Primer fluid from the HR products. Are we ready? Because everybody complains about my smoker unsmoking, so I thought, oh hell, I'll give it a chance. Woo! Now I need some marshmallows. <laughs> the trick is not to put any more shit in there when it's on fire. I thought since the cameraman was here, I'll just get him to use some of his muscles to give me a hand to throw these few foam boxes on to take down to the scrub. Hell, it's almost like a full circle from the beginning. And I was looking there the other day, I drove past and I thought, wow, maybe I can put these bloody boxes back on the bee stands that I made fucking five years ago. <laughs> the good thing about it was that it was the birth of the show, at least, wandering around a scrub with a post hole digger and a bloody pine post. So we're gonna go back. that these foam boxes are lighter than the wooden boxes. The memo they forgot to mention was if they've got bees and honey inside them, it doesn't make a hell of a lot of difference. It's still jolly heavy. Oh, dear. Oh. I suggest if you're going into beekeeping at any sort of scale, spend some money on being able to move the bloody things easy. But this is stupid. <laughs> I think I've forgotten how silly it was. the kangaroos or the goats decide to knock them over to get a drink but the thing I failed to figure out was that actually every now and then you have to wash out your drum if it's in the spot long enough because sometimes you get all sorts of crazy muck dying in here so I'm not really sure we might be able to pull it up to clean it out or we might not and if we can't well here we go I think it'll just pop out of the ground <gasps> Look at if I make the sound do you reckon I could pretend it's a cork <laughs> Fabulous MJ! Maybe I got sensible by here and I didn't dig it too deep. And we'll just give our drum a bit of a clean out. Muck out the bottom. That's one way to kill the algae, isn't it? To let the drum dry out. Oh. What would that make? That's not quite as cool as seaweed, but I guess you could nibble on it if you're really hungry. Forks are us. Forks are kind of going out of fashion. I'll tell you, mind you, I've got plenty in, in reserve. But It'd be a bit hard if you had the screw top bottled as floaties, wouldn't it? Maybe you could throw the coke bottle in their hole. Maybe you could just put the lid on a coke bottle and put a few coke bottles in there that the girls could roll around on. We might try that. That's a good idea. This is like picking up sticks. That was a game back in the day. 
that's the kind of thing that really annoys the people with their metal detectors trying to find a hidden treasure. Oh, it's just the top of a champagne cork. <laughs> oh no, I made nothing out of that. Right here, we put it back in the hole? I might steal some of these sugar corks as well, while I'm at it. If you scroll back far enough, you'll find out what these pots were for. These were our tree hanging feeders. If you're making tree hanging feeders, try to get yourself some UV friendly rope because it's not ideal. This was our prototype pollen feeder, which is pretty fascinating. I actually ended up doing something very similar except I put the holes the other way around so then you can fill your bucket up easier. Because this is a really bad idea because you can't carry the pollen in the bucket that you're using. So what I ended up doing with my, I got a little bit bigger bucket and I made the holes at the top of the bucket so you can put your pollen pet, pollen feed in the bucket and take it where you're going. And then you just tip it upside down after you put the lid on. Presto, same idea. And then the girls can burrow up through your dry feed and you don't have to worry about coming down and stirring the crap every couple of days because they can just dig up through there. All good in the hood. Being that Mr. Mr. Blister organization didn't actually bring his siphon hose, we're gonna to have to get a little bit closer to my drum because the only thing I've got is a bucket. Little just don't know that he's, no, maybe he's not bucketing. That's probably on me. Ha <laughs> ha, Bucketing in some water. Yeah, maybe I should have left my gloves on. <laughs> Help me, okay, he's so yow. You can do it, Duffy Moon. You and me, come, there's fucking bees everywhere in here. <laughs> can I ask a question, does the bucket fit in the lid? We're gonna find out. Probably fits in that way. Watch the bet the handle breaks. Who's putting bets on this crappy plastic handle? What are, what are the odds, you reckon? <laughs> Any bets out there? How long will the handle last? And will the bucket fit in the lid sideways? Quick. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Do you think the Bush Bee Man actually checked whether the bucket would fit in the drum? The cameraman reckons not. If it doesn't fit in the drum, the bucket was in the ute before the drum. So anyway, here we go. Look at that, wouldn't that surprise the sun? Hi, golly gosh, I'm good. Oh, that one bucket. Do you remember the siphon hose when I tried to kill myself? This might be a little bit slower, but a bit safer than my siphon hose when I tried to drown myself when we were down here years ago. Oh my God, I don't know how long ago that was in the show. I nearly choked myself to death. It was a bit hectic. <laughs> ah, the things I do for my ladies, honestly. Look at that. The handle survived. The bucket fitted. Ha, ah, it's a good day. 364 stings, holiday, Labor Day, we're rocking this shit. <laughs> right? Daddy cool, daddy cool. That's this week, daddy cool. It's not really a seat, but it's gonna have to do. It's a makeshift seat. Whew. Since we're gambling, you reckon it'll collapse if I sit on it? Oh my goodness. Oh, look at that. Actually, that's kind of cool. I might take that to the campsite. <laughs> this wasn't quite what I had in mind for this site. I mean, my idea was that I'm going to have a queen breeding site here, which it still might be, because I figure it's a long way from anywhere. There's a little bit of foraging food and I can have some drones within about a K and a half away and then they can figure out mating together, which is still what I might do. But at the moment, it's decided to become a Varroa mite refuge. So maybe I can just, you know, wait a little bit longer until the stuff turns up and figure out what I'm doing. Now, what are you doing about your mites? So if you're new to the channel and you haven't really been following along the journey for the last six years, some crazy person decided to buy this bit of land and I thought, this is gonna be cool. I could just be a beekeeper, have my hives here and then pick them up when I want them. Bum -ow, bad idea, that didn't happen. We had a drought, so that really put a spanner in my works and we went from a really good idea to a really crap idea in about one year, so that was all fun. But anyway, the general idea of the concept here is that I was hoping that this could be a good bee site that I didn't have to worry about. And now that the Varroa mites are coming, I'm thinking, well, it can be a good bee site to maybe, not that I think I'm gonna wait out the storm, because I think we're all gonna have to face the little critter one day or another within the year or two. I'm probably a little bit less afraid of this Varroa mite madness than I was because I've had a few Q&As with some fellow beekeepers from the States who have been dealing with this for the last 30 odd years. Most of them have never even known beekeeping before Varroa mite. So it's hopeful and I think it's all just about maintenance and management. So, poof, 
I'll have to get the wife out and get a bit more serious. I don't know if anybody remembers the cards that were on the jolly bee boxes, but hell, maybe I'll have to get back to that, but I doubt that's going to happen. I guess there's one upside to it. My mum keeps asking me, how many bees you got at Buzz Hill at the minute? And I usually have said to her for the last three years, oh, well, you know, we'll get some there eventually. It's all good. And I was trying to explain to her that if it doesn't rain, the scrub doesn't flower. So now the next time I go to visit my mum, I can say, yay, we're actually got some bees at Buzz Hill. Bit of sweet, though, because they're actually at Buzz Hill to try and avoid getting mitified. So I don't know whether that's good or bad. But anyway, my mum will be happy if no one else is. Have a look at this. I had some visitors that rolled up down here from the outback of Skate Boys. And it's still standing. The lads would be most proud of themselves. Good job, boys. The boys even made a song about this hut, which was really cool. But you'll have to go over to the outback Escape YouTube and check out the song. I thought it was pretty groovy. Actually, the whole show's pretty groovy. Let's go and have a look and see if I can hit my head. Look that out. I even got a little picket fence, so I have to walk down in there. <laughs> The only thing is, I don't think this will keep the cows in, but it looks cool. Oh, ducking. I don't think you're meant to be anywhere in your bee suit, John. If you're enjoying the show, don't forget to like, click, subscribe, and help us grow the channel, because that's the way this YouTube madness works. It's a great thing to have you all along for the journey. And if you'd like to help us out, go in and join the brew box, have a chat, maybe help us fund this craziness. General. Oh, up you get, up you get, buddy. Here we go. Off we go to the next project. This way, tally ho!